powers. 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 This world is mine and yours, it's all ours. Microdosing, psilocybin mushrooms, I will never stop it. Never. Cause it helps improve my vision and turns my eyeball telescopic. And we're all telepathic. I'm speaking deep, of course. I'm deep. Our human brain is more than capable yeah. of reading thoughts. Yo, what's the Gibbonator? Welcome back to another Modern Warfare Tips and Tricks video. Before we get into it, me and It's Lukey are doing a Modern Warfare giveaway. So if you'd like to enter to get a free copy of Modern Warfare, go down to the description, go to the tweet, and then just follow the rules of that tweet and you'll be entered into the giveaway. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So, this video is gonna be covering the top 10 common mistakes that Call of Duty players make in Modern Warfare and how you can avoid them and how you can fix them. So I'm actually gonna do these in order of their kind of severity and how bad and how much they will affect your play and how well you're gonna do. So let's start off with revenge kills. So revenge kills are essentially where you go after the person that just killed you. And Call of Duty is actually set up to make you go back again and again and again to the person that just killed you. So this is a very subconscious thing that Call of Duty players do, but when you actually look at the spawns in Call of Duty, there are specific spawns called revenge spawns. And that is where the game will literally spawn you next to the person that just killed you so that you're more likely to go back and kill them. Now, um, most people just get into that natural reaction and rhythm of just going straight back to that person. And that is gonna get you killed so many times. You're literally just gonna feed that person kills. If you die to the same person more than three times in a row, that's where you need to think to yourself, I need to change this up, I need to do something differently. Instead of running straight back to them, either come up with a new game plan, either try to flank them from a different direction, or just don't go for them. Go to another area of the map and try and kill some other people. You're gonna waste your time and you're not gonna have fun. So definitely stop going for revenge kills because they're really not helpful at all. Second on my list is sprinting without conscious thought. So in this game, it's very important that you are aware of your surroundings and most Call of Duties, you can pretty much run around like a headless chicken and you can get away with it. You can just tear up the enemies and it doesn't matter if you're sprinting around all the time. However, in Modern Warfare, it's really set up to um, help and benefit passive players that really have like a slow play style that like to think about what they're doing and like to move from cover to cover. So every time you sprint, I want you to think is it safe to do this right now? Is it safe to sprint? I see so many people that are constantly just sprinting into the middle of the map, sprinting into rooms, sprinting around corners, and they just assume that it's gonna be safe. So they sprint around the corner just assuming no one's gonna be there. Instead, what you should do is aim down your sights before you go around the corner, just in case someone's there, you don't know. And before you run through a door into a building, you should assume that there's a claymore there or that there's a mine. So don't just sprint in, otherwise you're gonna die. And sprinting through mid-map is just one of the stupidest things you can do because that's where there's the most action. So that's where you really need to be ready for anything with your gun up ready. So yeah, just be more conscious about when you're sprinting and just always ask yourself, is it safe? That's probably the biggest thing that I see people do wrong in modern warfare. And then number three, this one is a bit of a controversial one. So either underplaying or overplaying the objective. So what do I mean by this? So let's um, first of all cover underplaying. And this is something that I'm very um, kind of guilty of. So what I mean by underplaying the objective is you've all seen that guy that's playing domination and he's got zero caps when the game ends and that is obviously not helpful for the team. And that's gonna negatively impact how well you're gonna do. And I'm someone that's like that because I purely like getting kills, but I also like longer game modes. So I don't really care about the objective, which is a problem because if you allow the enemy team to cap all the flags on you, you're gonna lose map control and you are just gonna get absolutely throttled. They're gonna hold you in your spawn, you're not gonna be able to get out, they're gonna get all of the power positions and you're just gonna die repeatedly. You're not gonna have fun and your teammates aren't gonna have fun because they're gonna lose and then they're gonna blame you for not capping. So basically, 
that you've got to find the balance because then you can actually, I believe you can overplay the objective. You've all seen that guy that gets zero kills and 30 deaths, yet he's got 15 captures. And that really isn't helpful. So for example, in domination, if you're playing domination and then someone triple caps, so they cap all of the flags, they max out the caps that you, the flags that you've capped, I'm going to argue that that isn't helpful because it's going to mess up the spawns so you're not going to be able to predict where the enemies are spawning and you're not going to be able to have um, great map control because you're just not going to be able to predict where the enemies are. So in terms of going on long kill streaks and um, getting loads of kills, it's going to be super tough because you're just not going to know where the enemies are and then you're going to get annoyed because you're going to get shot in the back by people that have spawned behind you because you've messed up the spawns because you're triple capping. So what I recommend you do is if you're playing Domination always give them one flag because that's the flag you know they're going to spawn at and if you just hold back you can just trap them in that spawn and then you can cycle from position to position and just keep killing them for days and get those high kill streaks and hopefully get some nukes because and so it's all about finding that balance you've got to know when it's a sensible time to cap flags and play the objective and when it's not and if you're someone that wants to get more kills it always, it's not always the best thing to cap the objective. So if you're really smashing someone in headquarters, just hold back and just allow them to go in the headquarters for a bit and it'll just extend the game and allow you to get even more kills. So at the end of the day, it kind of depends on um, what type of player you are and what you value more, kills or winning. But figure that out and then I'm sure you'll have fun in the game. Right, so number four is pushing spawns too hard. So it's along the same vein as the last one. So I see so many people that just run straight into the enemy spawn and that isn't the best idea in my opinion. So you can really exploit the spawns if you really like control them as I said and you can go from power position to power position and that's a common thing done by Call of Duty players and it's called cycling. So um, it's kind of, a lot of people would call it camping, but I think it's a smart camping. You are literally trapping them in their spawn, moving from different area to different area so they can't predict where you are because enemies will figure out what you're doing and they will come back for you. And because of the nature of Call of Duty and the revenge spawns, like I said earlier, most players are gonna come back for you. So that's why it's important to move from power position to power position. But I mean, as soon as you push into their spawn, that's when everything gets messed up and they're gonna be spawning in random places, as I said, and you're not gonna be able to predict things. And so essentially, by being patient and resisting the temptation of pushing into the spawns, you can 10 extra kills and have so much more fun. So moving on to number five, it's rage. This is something that we are all guilty of. We've all had those games where we are screaming, punching things, and just not having a great time at all. But I'm gonna, kind of you've got to shift your mindset um by owning your mistakes and identifying that it's actually your fault and not blaming the game or blaming your internet or blaming your controller whatever it is you empower yourself you empower yourself to learn from your mistakes and to improve without admitting that it's your fault you can't improve so every time you start dying loads critically analyze why am i dying what is happening here and when you actually logically think about it, when has raging ever actually helped you do better? I don't think it ever has for me. It's just a pure waste of time. So what I developed for myself was the three death rule. If I get three stupid deaths in a row, instead of getting mad, what I do is I make a mental note and I try and figure out what I've just done wrong and then I try and do something different because that's another thing that Call of Duty players get trapped into. They do the same thing again and again and they wonder why um, nothing good's happening or why nothing's changing. So you've got to change up in order for your outcome to change. Otherwise, you're just going to constantly die to the same BS and you're not going to have fun. So if you die to stupid things, do something different and hopefully you'll figure out a way to have fun in that game. Number six is chasing enemies. This is something you should never do. When you chase an enemy, you give them power. You give them the control over you. And nine times out of 10, it will lead to your death. So what I'm talking about here is if you shoot someone a couple times and then they end up running around a corner, 
I don't recommend chasing them because what they're going to do, and I know this is exactly what I do, is I run into a power position, I get in a head glitch, I get in a corner of a room, and I just wait for them to run into my trap and I will kill them. And I may even put a claymore down. And you, the last thing you want to do is run straight into that trap. So, but like, this is a great tip. You really need to put this into your own games because. Honestly, it will change things up. It will give you much more power. And like, it's kind of counterintuitive to just forget about a person and just go, right, I'm not gonna go after them anymore. I'm just gonna go somewhere else. Um, but it seriously works and you'll have much more fun. So number seven, um, I want you to know your limits. Uh, know when you're starting to decline and when you're starting to become um, worse and you're starting to decline at the game. And instead of snorting a line of G Fuel, and uh, cranking up your headset and whatever and staying up till one o'clock in the morning, just go offline, just have a rest and then come back on when you're feeling refreshed because at the end of the day, improvement comes from consistency, not by having one all nighter and then getting mad at the game and not coming back to it the other day because you're mad. So just consistency is key, play for short, short amount of times frequently and you will improve drastically. So, moving on to the next thing, I'm gonna say um, for my number eight is too high sensitivity. Lots of people play at much too high sensitivities and they can't control it. I play so many games and I watch kill cams and I can literally see people doing like 5,000 spins every time they're trying to kill me. And it doesn't make sense. Their accuracy is awful and they can't do anything. I especially noticed this when I was playing Search and Destroy once and I was spectating a teammate and his accuracy was just god awful. I'm not saying high sensitivities are bad. If you can control it, good but you have to know what is within your skill limit if you're using a really like max sensitivity and you're only getting 10 kills a game then that's a problem you need to put your sensitivity down and get more control you'll be more consistent and you'll get more kills and you'll stop raging so that is a great tip as well just because a youtuber is using 10 10 sensitivity 20 20 you don't have to use what you're comfortable with and you'll perform the best and number nine it's swapping class after every kill and this is something that i actually noticed playing with my cousin so every time he would die he would end up switching his class to another gun and this is really bad and i noticed a lot of other people do this as well and why this is bad and is going to negatively impact your game is because you're not giving yourself time to adjust to one weapon and get good with it. So if you join straight into a game, you put on an assault rifle, you die twice, and then you're like, right, I'm pulling out an SMG, and then you die a couple times with that, and you're like, right, now I'm pulling out a shotgun. Every single time you're switching your class, you need to adapt, adopt a new playstyle. But doing that is really difficult because you're not even doing good with the playstyle you initially started with. So instead of switching your class every single death, stick with one and get good with it and you'll see the common theme here is just consistency and if you stay consistent you will improve moving on to the final mistake that people make the 10th mistake it's just copying and pasting youtubers class setups and you've got to think these class setups are designed perfectly for this YouTuber's playstyle. Now, if you have a very similar playstyle, copying their class setup probably will help you. But if you don't, so if you're someone that can't just run around non-stop and absolutely snap onto everyone, turn onto everyone like the Korean Savage, then using his class setups aren't gonna help you. You need to you you need to develop your own and design your own class setups that are specific to your playstyle. So for example, the Korean Savage will use overkill and all of the perks that allow him to use two SMGs at the same time and be really fast with his hands. But if you're someone that likes an assault rifle and likes to play more passively, using those uh, perks and weapons aren't gonna help you. So just think critically, am I the same as this player? Do I play the same as him? And is this class setup gonna work for me? Because I can guarantee you, if you're just copy and pasting without learning, you're not gonna improve. But yeah, that's been it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, leave a comment down below telling me which one of these mistakes you've been making and which one you think will help you improve the most. If you wanna see more tips and tricks videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, remember to enter the giveaway. Links in the description. Go to the tweet and just follow the rules and you will enter a, a chance to win a free copy of Modern Warfare.
It's been the Gibbonator, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.